Hello ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Answered. And today's video is about my Acra Mermix Octospinosis and I thought they were dead. Now I know what you're thinking, you're saying this is another doom and gloom one hood like your last video where you thought they were dead and are coming back. Yeah, but I generally thought these were dead as well to be fair or dying off because my fungus had died down to practically nothing but I'll explain all that in a second. Now this was their fungus garden from my last video which believe it or not was over three months ago now when I did that video to be honest as you can see here it's died back significantly to what it was or what it used to be um, in my previous videos and I'll show you that in a second and yeah I couldn't explain it the only thing I could put it down to when I'm thinking about it so retrospectively now is it's because of the heat because with that massive heat wave I think it got a bit too hot I tried my hardest to cool the room down it peaked at about 31 and a half degrees at one point and I think that might have had a damaging effect on the fungus so it died down to this but it didn't just go down to this it got worse now this clip is a screenshot from my Mesa Barbarus Conley just because it's the only footage I've really got of it being really small but if you look in the right hand corner you can just see the fungus and look how badly it's died back and believe it or not it got even worse than this it got even smaller and I generally thought uh oh they're doomed because I thought they were dead originally I had them in these two Wakushi leaf cutter pods the fungus was in the left the larger one and the prototype which obviously never went to retail was in the right and i was they were using that for their trash and i was feeding them from there and obviously it's full of trash right now but i'll talk about that a bit later because this is a recent photo but as you can see um there i was feeding them where they were putting the trash and i didn't know if that had a negative effect or a positive effect or whatever but it was a concern of mine which i think i alluded to in my last video so what I did was I asked Wakushi for a cheaper solution to what the pods are and he came up with this. Now this is a prototype that Wakushi was working on. Now at the time he didn't want to give it to me but I bent his arm around his back, headbutted him a couple of times and kicked him in the groin and he finally gave in and allowed me to have this. And I say have this, I still paid for it obviously but it's still a prototype and if he does release it on retail there will be some differences. But what it has got is it's got a big connector in the middle of the gable end of the outworld where I can connect those large tube ins as you can see. And what this has given me is a large area where I can put plenty of food in there and kind of stock it up if I'm going away for a bit so I know they'll be fine. Because even though the leaves dry out, which I have noticed with this outworld, they still harvest them so I can stock them up and then leave them for a while and, and like I said not need to worry about them. So I do think it's good for that to be honest but not only that though it's really easy to clean because I've got two large ent entrances at the top of the outworld compared to the tubs where I found it, the pods should I say, I found it difficult to clean them out. Some would probably argue it's because I've got fat hands, personally I like to say I've got big manly hands but hey matter of perspective. Now, for those of you that have seen my live streams or my most recent one, I do talk about this a little bit so you can get some information there if you choose. But what I have found about it is that my leaf cutters will not climb the acrylic at all. And when I first connected it up, they fell into it and they died in there. So what I had to do, as you can see here, I've got a big stick that goes from the bottom of the outworld to the tubing. Now, I don't know why I have had this issue. It might be because I've used the barrier, I've used even mineral oil and it's kind of seeped down, which I don't think it overly has, but it's a possibility. And they couldn't climb the acrylic for that reason. Sid never had this issue with his ants and I've seen him with his acromermix in this setup and they're crawling all over the place. Why mine don't crawl, crawl the acrylic, I can't tell you, but mine don't, that's all I can say. But I can tell you, I do love the having that stick there because it gives them the extra room in and I can see stuff like this where it's distinctly different from the ground. They're running along the twigs and it makes for some great cover photos, which you'll see from this uh, thumbnail from this anyway. But what I did do, I'm oh, stop freeze frame. There we go. I didn't get any of the T-junctions from Wakushi. I did ask for them, but he forgot to pack them. Not bothered because, you know, it's life. So I 3D printed myself one. So I've got a nice little T-junction as you can see here. But anyway, so I, I quite like this uh, setup and what it has done, which I'm not sure if it's directly related or it's because the temperatures have dropped and I can regulate the room temperature at 25 degrees a bit better than what I used to be able to. But I have seen significant growth in my fungus garden since connecting this outworld. So it could be linked, could not be linked, could be because of the temperature, I don't know. But either way, there is definitely a correlation between attaching this outworld and my fungus growth and i tell you what i haven't shown you it yet i've alluded to it a little bit with a couple of clips and a couple of videos but let's check out the fungus where it is today 
As you can see, it is doing better than ever. And I can't give you an exact time frame, but I reckon this is about um, from nearly being non-existent to the point of where the queen couldn't even fit in the fungus garden anymore and she was sat on the outside. It's grown to this. So, and I think that's been done over about a month and a half, maybe a month, but a lot of growth. Sorry about the condensation, but you can see it's covering about a two thirds of the base. So I reckon about volume wise, I've got about half of this tub or pod covered in fungus. Now, sorry about the blurriness, but trying to focus past that condensation is difficult. But as you can see, there is brood there. This was a big concern of mine because like I said, it's been rumored that leaf cutter queens will get infertile if they're kept over 30 degrees. And like I said, in that heat wave, it peaked over the 30 degrees. So I was very concerned that my leaf cutters weren't uh, queen and may become infertile. But as you can see here, I've still got plenty of brood. Now, if you think that's quite a fair bit of brood and quite healthy, check this next video out. I think the sun just caught it, so they're moving brood all over the place. But you can see there is plenty of brood in there and it's looking good. You know, my, my, I think I can forget my concerns that the queen was infertile because there's plenty of brood here and lots. And a lot more than I seen when the fungus was at its worst, when it was teeny tiny. So I'm pleased with that. Now, if we go back to this photo, you can see that the second pod or the original prototype pod here is being used as their trash area. There's not a lot of activity in there and I could probably clean it out fairly easily. Well, a lot easier than I could previously, but I haven't and there's a very good reason for that. But I'll talk about that in a second. But it was good to see that even though I connected this outworld, the, uh, the large outworld, they're not actually using it as trash now. That is purely for their feeding and all the rubbish is going in here. Now you're saying to yourself, why haven't I cleaned it out yet? And I'll just show you. They've actually started digging into that mound of dirt up on the right hand side. Now I can't really, see, you could see it until the sun got on it and then they've covered it up again. But you might get an inkling here, they've actually dug through and there's actually quite a large chamber in there as well. And you can see they're excavating it still now. So yeah, I'm not going to clean it out because I think they're going to use it for um, for maybe, maybe another fungus chamber. Who knows, but I am kind of curious. But I've also noticed as well that you can see these mites and worms, that's in the trash. Now clearly they're just dirt mites. They are not affecting my ants in any shape or form. There is a ton of them but they're not interested in the ants at all. They're not affecting the ants and they're not a drama, but they're clearly cleaning and processing up the rubbish. But here's a question for you. I've never put any external rubbish in here. I have never put any food in there that could have mites on it at all like that. So where the hell did they come from? Maybe it was off the plants that I've been giving them, but still, where have they come from? It is kind of curious. So this is the complete setup today. Now, yeah, I could make the tubing a bit wider, but I'm using my excess large tubing for something else at the moment. But this is the setup. It's very clean. It's very easy to look after again, which is great. My fungus is really picking up and I would strongly recommend anybody that may be a bit strapped for cash, because let's don't forget, it doesn't matter what retailer you get these leaf cutter pod, pods from, you're looking at 70 plus quid. So this Outworld, I think it's just the S5 Wakushi Outworld that's been modified. I'm sure if you ask Wakushi very nicely, if it's something you're interested in, he may ship it you as well. But that's a conversation between you and him and not me. But I can safely say that since connecting this Outworld, my fungus has taken off massively again. And I know what you're thinking. Is this going to be the end of the video? Hood's done his macro shots. He's talked rubbish. He's made a couple of bad jokes. We're missing something. Yes! A time lapse. Now this time lapse has been slowed down somewhat just so you can see it a bit better for this video, but I will put on Instagram the real time time lapse, the full speed of it so you can watch it. It's about a 30 minutes second video, I think it is. But anyway, this is what I love about this setup. I love watching them run across that um, twig at the top with the big flags of cut up leaves or in this case petals. Now normally I would pack this full of leaves and leave them to it, but I've obviously not today because I've been filming. So I let them eat it all down and so I could put this um, leaf, um, rose bud in there so you can see them cut up. Now I have found that they do predominantly love cutting uh, rose leaves. These are fresh ones because I've got still got some of my rose strangely enough, even though it's October and they love elder leaves. So that's what I've been mainly feeding them and they've definitely been cutting it and feeding it to the fungus. Now, like I say, I'm not saying this is the sole reason why my fungus has picked up and grown bigger than it's ever been in a very short period of time, but it's definitely been a contributing factor for me and ease of me looking after them. It's made looking after them a lot easier because I do find those pods quite difficult to 
clean out and to put leaves into and stuff like that especially because they're curved it doesn't matter how much barrel you put on especially with the humidity they can still get out that's been alleviated with this like i said ask wakushi see if you can get one off him well that's it for today then guys i do hope you enjoy this video now i do apologize i've not been active very much on social media and stuff i'm doing a lot of overtime just because i don't want to be in the house with my now ex-wife so i've not been about as much to do videos and get on the social medias and stuff like that but bear with me as soon as i get my own place set up in a purpose-built ant cave i will be producing videos back at the old rate that i used to I am looking at doing a bit more live streaming as well just because they don't take the time to edit videos as much as these do but I can also get out and see you guys and then you guys can interact with me and ask me questions and stuff so I am looking at doing a bit more live streams but that's going forward. But anyway, I thank you for watching this video and if you still listen to me blabbering rubbish then fair play to you. So thank you to you but also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. So please join me in saying a big super massive thank you to, when it comes up, Adam W, Antantix, Antimatter, David D, Paul A, Pavance, PJ Grant and the 530 Ski. If you want to become a Patreon, there'll be a link in the description below. I also need to say um, a big thank you to my YouTube membership as well. And if you want to become a YouTube membership, you just click the link below. There's a tab below this video. I think it says thanks or something. I don't know. But you can click that and you can become a member too. So I owe a big thank you again to... Well, it's coming, Antimatter, Lee, PJ Grant, Pumpkin and Wakushi. Yeah, again, if it weren't for all you guys support me, my channel wouldn't be what it is today. And on that, I owe Pumpkin a massive apology as well because she'd been a member for about a month and I just hadn't realised it because I didn't get the notification from YouTube. So thank you, Pumpkin, you're a ledge. Because of my videos have been dropping down a little bit, for my Patreons and my YouTube memberships, I'm going to start posting posts for you guys so you can see some more exclusive stuff just because I feel like I've neglected you with my drop-off and videos. But anyway, that's it for today then, guys. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye for now.